Kawhi Leonard's former trainer is suing the Clippers and says they gave him unsafe and illegal treatments. If this is true, no wonder he can't stay healthy. So what exactly are these unsafe treatments? Well, it reminds you of Isaiah Thomas with the Celtics that ruined his career. He was one of the best offensive players in 2017, but was never the same after playing through a hip injury in the playoffs. IT basically accused Boston of lying to him. You know, everybody hated Boston for what they did to me. The only thing that I, I think they handled wrong was not explaining to me what the extent of my injury could be if I do play. Because mm. nobody gave me no insight. Okay, if you do play, right. this can happen. Yeah, and what happened was he played, they made the Eastern Conference Finals, but he was never the same got traded to Cleveland and was basically out of the league three years later. From MVP level in 2017 to bench production, then a scrub. Because of an injury the team mishandled. So did the Clippers care so much about winning they ruined Kawhi's health? Well, some people say the details here are even darker than what happened to IT. So this all started back on the Spurs. They traded up to draft him, which they almost never do. Thought he was good, but nobody saw this coming. A 25% three-point shooter in college to 44% second in MVP, back-to-back -back defensive player of the year. So good, the only guy prime LeBron was visibly afraid of. In the 2013 finals, Kawhi checks in. LeBron straight up says, to himself. 21 year old Kawhi, look at how skinny the kid is. But then injury started and there is a direct line to what is alleged in this Clipper lawsuit. So Kawhi had a bum ankle before Zaza Pachulia undercut him in the 2017 playoffs. Spurs blew their 25 point lead and got swept. But next preseason, he was out with a quad injury unrelated to that ankle. Came out of nowhere. He didn't play the first 27 games, but what's worse is the Spurs were also in the dark, not just the fans. Now, we all know Kawhi doesn't talk very much, but he was getting treatment, not from the team, but from his own crew away from San Antonio. So his teammates started to get impatient. They called a players only meeting and said to Kawhi's face, he was not committed to the team. Then Tony Parker said to the media, I would have come back. Pfft, my injury was a hundred times worse than this. Then an ESPN article dropped saying there was officially a beef between Kawhi and the Spurs. It revealed one month before the quad injury, the Spurs handed control of Kawhi's rehab to his camp. Now he's off in New York getting treatment, getting seen by the Sixers team doctor. Oh yeah, they were paranoid. So they started sending Spurs doctors to New York and Kawhi would straight up dodge them. Like they would walk into the building, Kawhi would see them and walk out the back. Then during the playoffs, the Spurs were battling, but Kawhi didn't even show up to support. It was pretty clear, dude's not coming back. Kawhi never fully explained it, but his uncle Dennis said, sometimes you get these team doctors telling what you can and cannot do. They didn't believe him. And then after that, the relationship couldn't recover. So the Spurs said he could play, Kawhi disagreed, and that was that. But how does this relate to the Clippers? Well, after winning a championship on one leg in Toronto, the lawsuit says the Clips broke rules and tampered in free agency. Oh, they didn't speak with Kawhi directly. They went through his personal trainer. This guy, Randy Shelton, has been with Kawhi since college, one of his most trusted advisors. So the Clippers gave him a job inside the team, but regretted it. They started arguing about how to handle injuries. The lawsuit says Kawhi suffered an ACL tear in the playoffs and the target recovery for such an injury was 730 days. Simply put, this recovery timetable was unacceptable to the Clippers. So they called a meeting with the personal trainer and the doctor and the Clippers said, ah, we're gonna go with the doctor and speed this up. Sounds very Isaiah Thomas-like, doesn't it? The lawsuit also says in 2022, MRI showed cartilage damage in Kawhi's knee and he was given biologics to band-aid the problem instead of allowing Leonard the full time required to heal. Aha, illegal treatments. But what exactly was illegal there? He doesn't say. Well, super famous doctor in real life and on YouTube, Brian Suterer has some questions. He says that ACL timeline 730 days 
is way too long. And recent ACL tears in the NBA are like Jamal Murray. He took 18 months to get back on the court. And that was the longest timeline in recent years. I mean, look at Zach Levine, 11 months. And he was bouncier than ever when he came back. Kawhi wanted 24 months. And yeah, Suterer says that's actually better, two years. But three years is better than two. In four years is better than three. At some point, you gotta cut it off. And what about the illegal treatment? Well, the best that Suterer could come up with was like one of those non-FDA things, like what they do in Germany. Kobe used to do that every single off season. Not scary and illegal. This sounds like a trainer who was pushed out because he disagreed with the Clippers. Like he wanted Kawhi to rest 24 seven and the Clippers wanted him to, and I know this is harsh, play basketball. I know, it's crazy. I mean, after a certain amount of time, you're injury prone and more rest is not gonna help that. Like look at the timeline about how Shelton wanted two years rest for the ACL, but they brought in the ACL surgeon and sped things up. Oh boy, yeah, a personal trainer or literally a knee doctor who does this all the time. Who are you gonna trust? I mean, if anyone did anything wrong here, was it the Clippers? They let Kawhi rest so much, it got so out of hand, the NBA had to make a friggin' rule about it. Now every guy in the league has to play a minimum of 65 games to get awards. And a lot of that had to do with Kawhi. How could anyone say the Clippers were too harsh on him? This is not an Isaiah Thomas Celtics thing. This is a Kawhi thing every year, team after team. And it says a lot about the Spurs. I mean, were they unfair and harsh? Or can Kawhi's crew not accept their guy is injury prone? His body breaks down no matter how much rest he gets. And I get it, like Kawhi is super paranoid about these teams ruining his body if they let him. But that's not what's going on. It looks like we all thought Kawhi is being babied by these teams and that's exactly what happened. Now I cannot wait for this lawsuit to go to discovery because we could find out all sorts of juicy details about Kawhi's career. Now, one legitimate thing is the Clippers allegedly did not diagnose a concussion that Kawhi had one time, which is serious. But the messed up thing is a lot of people are gonna read the headline of this lawsuit and say, damn, the Clippers are awful. How dare they do this to a player? But it seems like Kawhi's crew blames his bad health on every team he has played for. But is it really their fault? Or is his body just broke? So, okay, what about some positive news in the NBA? Well, the Warriors actually look decent. I know it's early and Steph just tweaked an ankle, but the new additions are pretty good. But Jonathan Kaminga did not get a new contract. And so far, we're seeing why.